In this section we're going to look at user accounts, what they are, the different types of them and how you can work with them. User accounts are accessed through the control panel. Here we'll see the user accounts and family safety section. So let's click on that. Now at the top here we have our main user accounts section. Here we'll click there. Now let's look at the, uh, the different types of account we have first. Here we have an administrator. Administrators are people who can make whatever changes they want to the computer. They have full permission to be able to make changes with Windows and install and uninstall software. You also have a standard user account. Standard users are much more limited in that they can only change settings that affect their own user account. They can't change settings that affect other users. This can limit their ability to install software. Let's have a, a quick look through the standard user account panel. Here we can create passwords for the account, we can change the pictures, change the account name and change the account type. Here we can choose between a standard user and an administrator. You can see here because we only have the one user account on the computer at the moment then we can't make it a standard user. You must have at least one administrator account on the computer. But we'll look in the next segment at how to create an additional user account. We also have a link here to manage other accounts. And here, this is where we will see all of the user accounts that we have set up. Here we have a guest account, which is a, an ordinary standard user account that's pre-configured that you can very quickly and easily turn on and off. In the next segment, we'll look at how you create a new user account. OK, so now we've looked at the different types of user account there are in Windows 7, let's find out how you create one. Now, by default, when you install Windows 7, it will create a single user account. But you might want to have several user accounts. Uh, for instance, if you have a multi-occupancy house or you want a user account for, the, uh, for parents and, uh, and another for children in a home. You access these through the control panel from the start menu. In the user accounts and family safety um, section, you'll see an add or remove user accounts link. Let's click on that. We want to see down the bottom here we've got to create a new account link so we want to click on that. So we'll type the account name for this new account. So you can call the account anything that you want. Now you need to choose between a standard user and an administrator and you remember I said administrators have complete access to the computer and can make whatever changes they want standard users can only make changes to settings that don't affect other users let's create a standard user account here here we can now see that this user account has appeared and we can click on it to give us more options for that user such as changing the name creating a password, changing the picture, of which Windows 7 comes with a great many and you can use your own, setting up parental controls, which we'll talk about in a later segment, and changing the account type between standard user and administrator. When you want to switch between uh, users on your PC, remember I said in the last section, um, from the start menu, you can either switch user or log off and switch user is a very very fast and quick way of switching between users on a computer without having to shut it down. In the next segment we'll look at how you manage your user accounts. Now that we've covered the different types of account you can have in Windows 7 and looked at how to create a user account, let's look at how we manage an account that's already set up. In the control panel, under the user accounts and family safety option, click add or remove user accounts. Here we'll see all of the user accounts that we have on the computer. Let's click on this one, the administrator account. Now there are different things we can do here. We can change the name of the account. Let's say we just want to call it Mike. You can call an account anything that you want. You can create a password for your account. 
Now, this can be important if you have a family situation, for instance, or a situation where bus with a business where you have an administrator on the computer and several, one or several standard users. You don't want the standard users to be able to change whatever setting they want on the computer or install whatever password they want. But if the administrator doesn't have a password on the account, then a standard user may be able to make those changes. So you can type a password here. You can also type a password hint. This is uh, uh, something that will help you remember what your password is should you forget it. So we'll say um, Mike's usual password and create the, create the, uh, click the create password button when you're ready. That now is a password protected account and Windows will tell us that. We can remove the password in exactly the same way by typing in the password and clicking the remove password button. We can also change the user picture. Here we've got a flower but Windows 7 comes with a great many of these and you can click the browse for more pictures link at the bottom of this window uh, and use any picture or any photograph that you want on your computer. Let's pick this little fella. Press the change picture button when you're ready. We can also change the account type here between an administrator and a standard user. It won't let us change this particular account because Windows 7 must have at least one administrator account set up and on this computer there is only one. But if it was a standard user account you could perhaps upgrade them to an administrator here. Again, press the manage other account link if we want to change uh, properties for another account. In the next segment we'll have a look at parental controls. Now that we've seen how to manage user accounts in Windows 7, let's have a look at how we can set up the parental controls. You access these in the control panel in the user accounts and family safety section. You'll see a link here to set up parental controls. Now Windows is warning us, we can see here in this yellow section, that in order for parental controls to work, at least one administrator account must have a password on it. We can see here there's one administrator account and it doesn't. We can click on this to set up a password for this account. So we'll type one in here. And we can type in a password hint, just in case we forget it. Click OK when you're ready. We can now set up parental controls for this user. So let's click on the user and have a look at the different controls that are available. Turn parental controls on by putting a dot in this box. We can control the times that the computer can be used. Let's say we don't want them to be able to use the computer before 8 o'clock in the morning, after 6 o'clock in the evening Monday to Friday, and after 9 o'clock in the evening on weekends. You can also tick uh, select individual uh, boxes um, to select more specific times as well. Press the OK button when you're ready. You can control the games that people can play. You can disable all games, you can block or allow specific games, or you can set, set game ratings. We can see at the moment all games up to 18 certificates are allowed. Let's say we want to only allow games up to a 12 certificate. So we'll select that and now only games up to a 12 certificate will be allowed. We can also filter games based on other criteria as well. Let's say we don't want any of those. Click OK when you're ready and we'll see here the maximum allowed rating for games is now 12 and game descriptors are blocked as well. Click OK when you're happy here. Finally we can allow or block specific programs. This will bring up a list of all the programs that are installed in Windows. Sometimes the uh, program names aren't, ex aren't extremely helpful but you can see in the description uh, information about the programs that are available. You should be very careful when using this feature as you will uh, tick only the programs you want that user to be able to use. Um, so you should be very certain they don't need to use other programs or that other programs won't need to use other programs. Press OK again when you're happy.
that you set parental controls the way you want them. There are additional parental controls that you can also download, including uh, web content filtering and uh, blocking certain websites, for instance, based on uh, the type of content that's, uh, that's on them. Uh, you can either get these through third-party uh, software or through the Microsoft Live Essential Suite, which uh, you can download from download.live.com. In the last segment of this section, we'll have a look at how you can delete a user account. So we've looked at the different types of user account you have in Windows 7, how to create them, how to manage them, and now we'll look at how you can delete and remove a user account, because you may occasionally want to do this. Again, in the User Accounts and Family Safety section of the Control Panel, click Add or Remove User Accounts. Here we can select the user we want to remove, let's say this standard user, and we have a Delete the Account link here. If we delete it, then Windows will say, do we want to keep any files that are there? Now when you delete account, you, uh, you ought to bear in mind that that particular user may have documents, photos or music that they want to keep. If you want to keep them, press the Keep Files button, and if there are any files there, it will create a folder on your desktop containing those files. We know there aren't any files for this user account, so we'll select Delete Files. Windows 7 will now prompt us, do we really want to delete this account? Let's make sure we're deleting the correct account. It'll give us the account name up the top here, and if we're certain that we want to confirm that we want to delete this user account, press Delete Account. That account is then gone. That's how you manage user accounts. In the next section, we'll look at how you connect to and manage a network.